Okay, repeat after me, Lydia. Welcome. Welcome. To. To. Joe. To. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yay! Yay! Well, thanks, Lydia. Uh, like she said, welcome back to Joe Wednesday again. Uh, how are you doing? What's new? Uh, what's new for me? Well, um, a lot more uh, playground action, so why don't we just start a few clips for you as I'm talking. Um, so, it was really funny this week. Uh, Lydia Lydia kind of became a bit of her own little ringleader at, at, uh, at the playground a couple of times this week. Um, so, she was just there. We, we got there. There was maybe one other kid there on Monday when we got to the, the playground. And... She just like, you know, I, I think the girl was just kind of feeling lonely, so she asked if she could play with us. And I'm the, I said, sure, but I'm like, you know, Lady's only like two and a half, so she may not be too interactive, but I'm sure if you run around with her, she'll chase after you and join you and that kind of stuff. And when she almost immediately did, like, they started going up the tunnels and down slides and running around in circles and that kind of stuff. It was really cute. Uh, really cute to watch. Very, a lot of fun. Um, Definitely a good amount of social interaction for Lydia, which I was very happy for her to get. Oh, but, um, but then, like, oh, as we were there, another oh, family, yeah, I think, had gotten, gone. like, they had gotten off of school, and they were stopping by the park before they went home. And it was so funny, because, like, yeah. one minute, I was watching Lydia, and she was kind of off by herself in the corner, and then... Like, I must have just, like, turned away for, like, a split second, and suddenly I look over at Lydia, and she, like, no like there are way. two other kids just Run running out. behind her, following her around, and they're all laughing and having a great time, and, like, they run out to the bridge and sat in it with each other, and, and oh my, it, it was just, like, like, all of a sudden, like, she's, like, a kid ringleader at this playground. I'm like, how the heck did that happen? Um, well, it was, it was really kind of funny. Um... It got it got me thinking about something kind of weird though. Um, so sometimes when I'm trying to get myself away from either YouTube videos that I've been watching or like I'm bored of the music I'm listening to or something like that during work or whatever, um, I usually like I I, I found myself like like searching for just like debates about i mean it can be about generally anything but like like i just like look up public debates to like for one like to hear speakers uh like you know hear new ideas same ideas reinforcing stuff i don't know um and but the only reason i'm mentioning anything of that because it's going to kind of lead back into what i was talking about with lydia is that there was this there was this one debate i saw where this rabbi was saying something along the lines of like you know like kids aren't all just like happiness and light and like and I, I'm, I'm sure it was like a debate of like are people generally good or generally evil something like that um but he was like like someone who thinks we're all good has never gone to a playground because like yeah you know a new kid walks into the playground and and yeah everybody goes like oh yes let us embrace this new person and share our toys with him and that kind of something he's like no that's not what happens they like you know they isolate themselves and and isolate the person that's joining them and that kind of thing and um and like i like i said the only reason i was thinking about that at all was because like that was not at all what what happened with lydia like 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 there were kids already there that welcomed her in and then once other kids came there they either were welcome to join in or like they at least kind of did their own thing without getting in anybody else's way because with the girls that joined up with Lydia there were also a couple of boys that were about the same age but they were old definitely older than Lydia like they were maybe like five or so um but like they were like like telling each other to like get out of Lydia's way when she would be like coming up the tube slide and like all these kids were like helping pull her up and that kind of stuff it was like it was really like it was just really great to see all these kids like getting along and playing with each other or at least like you know my, like like helping each other when they can or at least minding their own business and not getting in each other's way and picking on each other and that kind of stuff so I mean like like I I, I to like back to the debate thing like i i think i understood and took the rabbi's point but at the same time it's just like i don't think that's like universally true and i mean it's certainly i certainly think what helped out with it was like you know like no kids like had toys to themselves that they were like not sharing with one another like they were all just going there to be on the like playground that's like a collective public thing that everybody was using together so so they just very naturally found a way to 
share it with each other without even being told, you know, like, because I mean, like, certainly Lydia is not like old enough to understand how to like share her space quite yet. Like we're, you know, we're trying to instruct her on that, but like, you know, like they, that's not something somebody just like naturally knows, but yet all these kids are doing it by themselves. Like, I, and, and I mean, it was, it was really touching to just, just see all the playground stuff that, that Lydia has been doing. And, um, like it, it's been it's definitely been a struggle having her home as far as like uh schedule because like you know w work has been busy and all that kind of stuff but like it's 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 been worth it to kind of like see how Lydia is doing like with play and with kids and that kind of stuff like I you know in a way that we hadn't been able to see her do that before um so so yeah that, that was that was a lot of fun. That felt it felt really good. It felt really good to see her doing that stuff and having fun. So I I'm, I hope you in, uh, are enjoying or have enjoyed the the clips that we have shared over the last two weeks. Um, so yeah. So that's all I wanted to say on there. Um, let's see. So I wrote this down as a potential topic. I don't really know how much I'm gonna personally dig into it. Um, but like I did not know that like the student loan like debt or student debt forgiveness stuff was going to be such like a it was going to be the hot topic issue once Biden won the election and um so like to kind of like been I've been seeing it on the news and seeing it on like the the YouTube news channels that I watch and that kind of stuff so I was I was kind of surprised like that was the topic coming up where I, I kind of figured like the pandemic or like how to address the pandemic was going to be a more of a more of a hurt issue than what I uh, expected um, but yeah, I guess I, and I kind of don't know how I feel about one way or the other. Cause like, I mean, like on the one hand, like it would definitely help us out because I mean, like whatever, whatever amount they would agree to, to forgive for a student loan. I mean, that would be like any, any amount is going to help us out with, with uh, Ashley's student loans. Um, but like at the same time, like, I, I'm like, like how, like, like, are we just going to like not ask them to pay it and just like add that to the debt or the deficit? How does this work? And like, like, I, I, I think I, I just need to like look into more information about it, I guess, before I really decide how I feel about it one way or the other. Cause like, it just seemed like, I guess I kind of lean towards like, like the reasons that like dad and mom didn't pay for my tuition was so that I would have some like value and like appreciation of it. But at the same time, like, like the, obviously the student loan debt is like no joke as it sits right now. And, um, like one, one of the biggest complaints, uh, against it was like, you know, well, I, I didn't, I didn't get, you know, my, my student loans forgiven. So why should they get their loans forgiven? And <laughs> I kind of, I kind of had a flashback back to like high school. Cause like when we were doing our standardized tests in, in high, in, uh, in high school, I think they were the OGTs. Uh, I could be misremembering, but, um, like my sophomore class when we were, when, I should say my class when we were sophomores had one of like the highest, like, um, highest averages of our class versus any other class that had taken it thus far and at least two or three years after us um but like you know we we didn't get our exams exempt but then two years later the that when we were seniors the sophomore class got their exams exempt and they didn't even perform as high as we did and it's, you know i remember you know remember people and like complaining about how that's not fair and blah 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 blah, blah. and it's just like there's it doesn't seem to me that there's going to be any like fair way to do it, but I, at the same time, like with how high the the student loans are in the country, like is there gonna be a fair way to do it? Like I don't I don't think there is. So like, build a bridge and get over it. I guess I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I I think I need to get more information, but. You know, something that you know what came across my wire today so why not talk about it a little bit um and the only other thing i wanted to talk about today was i saw recently a really cool um one of those uh randomizer speed runs on uh, legend of zelda link to the past like i've i've been seeing a bunch of um uh what what is it uh games done quickly uh, yeah D gdq yeah um like, I don't know if they do, like, tournaments, like, seasonally or something like that, but, like, uh, I think I saw, like, a replay of, like, the finals, 
back in 2018, I think of the, like the spring, it was like Andy versus somebody else. I don't know, some like Thordian. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but um, it was one of the closest matches I've ever seen. And it like it actually it actually like ended the the stream of it ended in a draw. And then like like whoever like where the judges were gonna review it and then come back and say who actually won because it was like it was like milliseconds close of finishing the game at the same time even though they did, even though they took completely different routes it was it was so cool to watch because like because Andy was seemingly in the lead because he was he had dungeons done that the other and his player hadn't or he was kind of like on his coattails the whole time but um the biggest component that offset that difference was Andy did not have the silver arrows which is kind of like the boss killer of the game where the other person did so the his opponent was able to go through bosses a lot faster than he was and doing the final boss without the silver arrows takes a lot of time and and because like i remember andy starting the last fight when his opponent was only halfway up the last tower so like he had a, a whole half a dungeon to do, a mini boss to do, and then start the final boss. And Andy was already there, and yet this and, and I mean and I mean like the way his opponent caught up with him was amazing because like Andy had to do like this uh, spin move attack to finish him off, um, and but but then uh, his opponent got like a triple arrow shot on Ganon, and I didn't even know you could do that in that game, and it was freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so like and suddenly like Ganon is exploding in both screens at the same time and you're like oh my god that was insane oh my god so anyway I'm calming down a little bit um what I got thinking about about that is like the typical response of people who watch sports and say that esports isn't a sport I I don't think they get it and it's not that it, 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 I think it really boils down to it's like, you if you don't know the game and don't want to know the game or are not interested in the game, that's perfectly fine and legitimate. And I'm not saying you have to be, um, you don't, you don't have to have anything to do with it. But I mean, I think you could basically flip flop that argument in the opposite direction anywhere it goes. And it's still applicable. Like if somebody doesn't give a crap about football they're not going to care that you're that into the game <laughs> that you're watching. If you're like, you know, watching like the Super Bowl and you're like the, the teams are really close and it's like maybe like a field goal decides the game or something like that. It's like, and it's really intense and exciting. And it's like, but, but, and, but they're going to feel the same way about that game that somebody like me is going to feel when they watch a, such a close race between two speedrunners. Like, so like I like to to say that they're not the same because like one is an athletic arena and one is more of like a technical like arena. I don't know. I don't know how to really define it like a video game, but like but like it's still like watching skilled people like work their craft in a way that's impressive to watch. And I think that on its own is what should like legitimize esports and sports or or versus sports I should say. And it's like I think a lot of people that that are kind of naysayers to esports. I don't I don't think they give enough credit for the for the players that are doing the things that they're doing. Um, but anyway, I don't know if that was supposed to be a high horse or not, but I'm going pretty long this uh, this week, so I'm gonna cut myself off here. Um, so we'll talk to you guys later. We love you. Bye.